just when George was sure he'd seen all the moving things, there was another one. It was too small for people, <laughs> but perfect for George. Maybe it was a monkey mover. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, that? Oh, they use it to find things. Maybe George could borrow it to look for his plane. All set. Let's find our gate and... George! <laughs> George, fancy seeing you here. <laughs> Would the parent dog... <laughs> So long, George. Have a nice trip. <gasps> Have a nice flight, George. Oh! <laughs> now, George, I'm just going to confirm our seat assignments. Whatever you do, don't go anywhere. I mean it. doing here? You should be at the animal loading area. <laughs> Do you have any bananas on this flight? <laughs> well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. How did you get out of your crate? Where is your crate? Hey, you don't belong here. You got yourself a seat. Now we gotta get you to your plane. Quick, you can ride in the tub. George! George! This is the final boarding call for Kona Carriers Flight 5230 to Hawaii. H have you seen George? But I can't get on! I've lost my monkey! Now, do you mean George? Enjoy your flight, George. <laughs> Thanks, Captain. <laughs> oh, there you are, you little dickens. I was hoping I'd see you again. Remember me from the line? <laughs> you left this on my bag. <laughs> That airport was a fun place. It was like a vacation before vacation. In fact, the airport was better than vacation. For George, the quiet beach didn't compare to the buzzing, flashing, beeping airport. <laughs> but then again, when you're curious, fun has a way of just showing up. This sand felt different. Oh. That other sand was obviously broken. Ah. Uh -huh. ah. 
if he could make a sand bunny, he could make a big castle here. But before he built his castle, he had to make seven sand bunnies, because Bill had seven. <laughs> Don't look yet, I'm not done. <laughs> George brought the man with the yellow hat down to see his bunny sand sculptures. <laughs> but he couldn't find them. He was positive he'd built them this far from the water. Who would take a guy's sand bunnies? Did you lose something? Hey, where are your pail and your castle book? George knew he'd left those on the rock. But the rock had moved. <gasps> that rock used to be out of the water, didn't it? You know what happened, George? The tide came in. You see, this rock didn't move. When the tide's in, the waves reach higher up the beach. Hmm. Did the waves wash away what you built? Oh, I'm sorry, George. This just isn't a good spot to build. The ocean will wash everything away. Huh. Hey, you guys. I'm really sorry. Well, Ma Rabbit burrowed right through your nice castle when I wasn't looking. Oh! <laughs> well, our surprises didn't turn out like we expected, huh? Uh-uh. You know what? Let's not go home disappointed. If we work together, we can build one good castle before the day's over. Can I help? Uh-huh. <laughs> See? So they all pull together. All right, once you get good wet packing sand, carry it away from the water so the waves can't wipe out your work. That's a pretty good job, boys. It was a great little castle, but George wasn't going to give up on his dream of having a great big castle. Even if it took all summer, he would keep looking for just the right place to build his castle. And when he found that perfect spot, he wanted to be prepared. Oh. George? Go! <laughs> oh. No! Uh, oh. Good morning, George. Uh, I'm going to sleep five more minutes, OK? <laughs> no! <laughs> this hurry! This here roller coaster! 
Master whips and snaps you around hairpin turns at 70 miles per hour. So come on down to Zany Island and ride the Turbo Python 3000. That's Captain's orders. Oh, well, that looks uh, very exciting, George. Uh, anyway, we have a lot of errands to run today. I, you know, I gotta get... <laughs> Like I was saying, I'll get dressed so we can spend a fun day at Zany Island riding the Turbo Python 3000. <laughs> now don't eat all that licorice at once, okay, George? Huh? Oh. <laughs> Hi, Steve. Betsy? Hello, Hi, George. <laughs> Hey, have you guys been on the Turbo Python 3000? We've been on nine times already. That's the record. Ah, is it uh, fun? He screamed his head off nine times. We're gonna ride it all day. Wanna come? <laughs> Everyone was excited about riding the Turbo Python 3000. Except the man with the yellow hat. He was afraid of roller coasters and remembered the first and last time he rode a roller coaster. It was so long ago, he was just the boy with the yellow hat. <laughs> and since that day, roller coasters upset him. Okay, I'm a grown man. I have no reason to fear a roller coaster. No! Uh, enjoy the ride, George. Whew. I am thirsty. <laughs> uh, excuse me. Uh, I'm sorry, but you can't ride the Turbo Python 3000. Huh? Uh, you have to be as tall as this sign to ride. And, uh, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, pal. <laughs> that goes for you, too, son. Do you mind if we ride without you? Uh, yeah. Sorry, I measure to the top of a head, not the top of a hat. <laughs> You're going to have to really grow before you can ride there, little fella. George wondered exactly how much he had to grow. But when he measured with his hand, he was the same height as the sign. He must have grown already. <laughs> You're not measuring right. I wish I had a ruler or something. Let's see. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Well, the sign is five licorice whips tall, and you are one, two, three, four licorice whips tall. You can come back when you're grown one more licorice whip tall. And until then, enjoy the rest of the park. <laughs> Maybe stars were only in the country, like mooses. Kind of tough counting stars in the city. They're up there, but we just can't see them. Really? It's like trying to count stars during the day. There's too much light. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, we can't turn it on, George. Don't want to knock out all the power. At least his star counting pad was good for something. George was too hot to sleep. The one time he could have stayed awake and there weren't any stars to count. People had their windows closed and their air conditioners were on. George could hear them hum. With all those people using air conditioners, it couldn't hurt if George turned theirs on. He'd only turn it on just long enough to cool a little monkey. There was only one thing for a monkey to do at a time like this. Hide. George? George? Uh, the power's out. <sighs> George? Where are you? George? You up here? Uh-huh. Hi, compass. George tried to tell the man with the yellow hat how sorry he was for wrecking the city's electricity. Oh, you think the blackout is your fault? <laughs> oh, George. It takes more than one little monkey to cause a blackout. I hope. Oh, hello. Just came up to check on the pigeons. This blackout's really something, isn't it? Uh-huh. George thinks it's his fault. He turned on our air conditioner. Uh-huh. <laughs> I thought it was my fault, too. Honey was so hot, I turned on our AC. Then the lights went out. <laughs> but the radio said it was really caused by ants. <laughs> ants? Carpenter ants chewed through some poles in Ohio, and the lines went down. <laughs> well, George, there's one good thing about a blackout. You can use this. <laughs> George hadn't even thought to look up. This seemed like even more stars than they had in the country. That's not the only good thing. These will melt with the freezer turned off. So I guess we just have to eat them. You found the Big Dipper. <laughs> George settled in for a good, long, relaxing star count. <sighs> this sand felt different. That other sand was obviously broken. <laughs> if he could make a sand bunny, he could make a big castle here. But before he built his castle, he had to make seven sand bunnies, because Bill had seven. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look yet, I'm not done. <laughs> George brought the man with the yellow hat down to see his bunny sand sculptures. But he couldn't find them. 
he was positive he'd built them this far from the water. Who would take a guy's sand bunnies? Did you lose something? Hey, where are your pail and your castle book? George knew he'd left those on the rock. But the rock had moved. <laughs> that rock used to be out of the water, didn't it? You know what happened, George? The tide came in. You see? This rock didn't move. When the tide's in, the waves reach higher up the beach. Hmm. Did the waves wash away what you built? Oh, I'm sorry, George. This just isn't a good spot to build. The ocean will wash everything away. Huh. Hey, you guys. I'm really sorry. Well, Ma Rabbit burrowed right through your nice castle when I wasn't looking. Oh! <laughs> well, our surprises didn't turn out like we expected, huh? Uh -uh. You know what? Let's not go home disappointed. If we work together, we can build one good castle before the day's over. Can I help? Uh-huh. <laughs> See? So they all pull together. All right, once you get good wet packing sand, carry it away from the water so the waves can't wipe out your work. a pretty good job, boys. It was a great little castle, but George wasn't going to give up on his dream of having a great big castle. Even if it took all summer, he would keep looking for just the right place to build his castle. And when he found that perfect spot, he wanted to be prepared. When Mrs. Quint asked for help setting up a surprise party for Mr. Quint's birthday, <laughs> George was almost ready. He practiced yelling, surprise, until he was really good at it. <laughs> but he wanted to be the best, so he kept practicing. You ever thrown a surprise party for Mr. Quint before? Well, it's the only way to give him a party. Because they're such a big family? Exactly. I'm watching for Mr. Quint's boat. No sign of him. Oh, you don't have to watch yet, Bill. He won't be back for at least two hours. Whoa! It's not my birthday, George. I'm not supposed to get surprised. <laughs> He's home early. No. Oh, what do we do? <laughs> oh, take him to your house and keep him there till party time. 
<laughs> Not yet, George. Well, hey there, young fellas. Ooh, looks like you sprung a leak. Bad luck today, huh? Eh, not all bad. Got to see part of the river I never saw before. <laughs> the bottom. Well, I gotta change my soggy socks. Don't, uh, uh, don't. I, I mean, come to our house. <laughs> we want to build a fish pond and need expert advice about fish. Uh, well, sure. Well, let me just get some dry clothes. Here, dry clothes. Go help him. All right, Mother, if you say so. Huh? No quit can resist fish crackers. They may come in handy. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, goodbye. Have fun. So George and the man with the yellow hat kept Mr. Quint busy with lots of questions. What do you think? <laughs> well, if you make a pond that big, you can have almost any size fish. As George was about to ask exactly how many whales he could have, Mr. Quint's brother, Flint Quint, showed up. Ooh, 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 ooh. Hmm? Oh, uh, uh, hi! George, it's Mr. Quint's brother, the train station master. Hey, Clint, happy birthday! Hey, Flint, happy birthday! <laughs> oh, didn't you know the Quints were born together? Uh, so, Flint can't know about the party either, okay? The Quints were twins. Now George had two people to yell surprise at. It couldn't get any better. You know, I said you needed help, so I came right over. Well, this here's fish business, not trains, so you can weigh anchor. I'll meet you back at my house. Uh, don't go. Uh, uh, we want to know about running a train around the pond we're planning. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> Hello? Oh, it's Mrs. Quint. Disaster. The bakery truck broke down, so they can't deliver the birthday cake. Don't worry. I, I can go pick it up. Oh, thank you. It's at Mr. Piscato's bakery over in Franklin Square. You can't run tracks across the pond. It'll scare the fish. Well, then we'll just have to tunnel. Guys, could you monkey sit for me while I run an errand? Uh, sure. We'll just figure out the pond while you're gone. <laughs> George, it's your job to keep the quints here so the surprise isn't wrecked, okay? <laughs> George knew this would be easy, because the Quint brothers would probably argue about the pond for hours. Well, we've got it all worked out. The perfect pond and train. <gasps> so we'll monkey sit you at my house where we could draw up plans. <laughs> George had to keep the quince here. It was important. The surprise. Fish crackers. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh. Ah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh. George never realized that Hunley spent so much of the day playing. This was fun. <laughs> Only his hands weren't used to being dog paws. George realized he needed a few small changes to be a good dog. Did you have a nice ride, Dante? <laughs> I bet you did. Well, what is this? Well, Hunley, it looks like we have two lobby dogs today. <laughs> what do you think of that? <laughs> <gasps> Say bye-bye, doggies. <laughs> uh. 
But being Hunley wasn't all fun and games. Ow! It helped to be long and low to do this job. Why, thank you. Look, Dante, Hunley found your ball. Good dog. George wanted to be a good dog, too, just like his new hero, Hunley. Hold the elevator. And here was his chance. But picking up things with your mouth was harder than it looked. That's a baby, right? Hi, baby. Thank you, um, that's a dog, right? Thanks, doggy. Hunley couldn't believe it. Everyone knew dogs were more dignified than that. Ugh. Being a dog was hard work. Just look what it did to Hunley. Delivery! Looks important. We'll get it upstairs right away. Come on, lobby dogs. <laughs> Uh-oh. Hey, looks like we're stuck. Oh. It's okay, Hundley. We can handle this. I'll sound the alarm. Uh-oh. Oh. There's only one way out. But we need somebody who can monkey up. Say. You've been such a good dog, George. I almost forgot you were a monkey. George had almost forgotten he was a monkey, too. <laughs> there were things monkeys could easily do that no one else could. <laughs> Hello? I I'd like to report a stuck elevator. Best of all, George didn't even have to think about how to be a monkey. <laughs> it just came naturally. A flashlight! Thanks, George! <laughs> and a bottle of water? And cushions? And a radio! And sometimes a monkey... <laughs> ...was just the thing to be. Even Hunley thought George was pretty amazing. He might even make a good dog someday. But George didn't want to be a dog anymore. All he wanted was to take a bath, brush his teeth, and go to bed in his nice, clean room. I just wrapped 15 in a row. There you are. I've been looking all over for you. George wanted to play with the wrapper people some more. But he had to get these pants home. <laughs> George hadn't been gone very long. But when he got back, <gasps> the present had disappeared. Thanks for picking up my pants, George. <laughs> oh, I know how curious a little monkey can be, so I put the present away. That should take your mind off of it. <laughs> but hiding the present only made George more curious. Ooh. 
This was the first time George noticed the walls were wrapped. It looked like wrapping on top of more wrapping. <laughs> Maybe there were a hundred layers of wallpaper under here. Or not. Since he reached the end, George tried to put it all back. But it didn't want to go. Then he thought of a way to make this the perfect bathroom for the professor's birthday. Is that you, George? Make sure you wash up before Professor Wiseman gets here. <laughs> and would you make sure that bowl of her favorite fresh fruit is out where she'll see it? <laughs> you can't get away with that. <laughs> You didn't wash. This hand is all sticky. Okay, now, wow. Whoa, 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 whoa. What happened in here? Uh... Oh, Professor Wiseman, help me hide this mess. <laughs> Hello, George. Everything okay? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be right out. I got your favorite fruit. Help yourself. Ooh. <gasps> Is this a benangerine? You can't put skins on fruit, George. Only nature can do that. <laughs> on the other hand, nature doesn't make benangerines. Uh, sorry, I I'm... Happy birthday from George and me. Oh, you didn't have to. Would you like to help me open it, George? Woo! <laughs> I never would have guessed that's what was in this big box. That's uh that's why it was wrapped that way. Oh, my favorite symphony. You remembered. Thanks. Let's listen to it during dinner. Oh, here, I'll get that. George figured he'd better eat something. Because this was going to take a while. <laughs> sure, you can play with that stuff. <laughs> uh, but don't ride the unicycle without a helmet. Great stuff. Let's get to work. <laughs> Betsy, Aunt Margaret says to be home for dinner in an hour. Holy cow! We made our own mini golf course! You wanna play? Okay. In our game, each hole uses a special club. Yeah! <laughs> You'll never get it through there. You kept hitting the windmill yesterday. If George can do that, I'm gonna break all my golf records on this easy course. <laughs> ha, 
<laughs> oh, George, thanks. But I really don't need help on this. Are you keeping track of your score on this easy course, Steve? Oh, yes. Okay, on the first hole, George got a one. Lucky. Betsy got a six, and I got a six. The club for this hole, please. Here we go. <laughs> Whoa. My first ever! <laughs> Looks like I'm going for the record, too. Okay, here comes my hole-in-one. scores ever on this course. Yeah, so? They're still the best. What's the club for the last hole? <laughs> no club. It's a blowhole. Get it? Whale? Blowhole? <gasps> okay. Going around. And the house? <laughs> the end of the game, I have 40, and Betsy has 25, and George got a 21? <laughs> I told you you'd play better when you knew the rules. I'm sorry. I said monkeys shouldn't play golf. You guys want to play real mini golf tomorrow? Uh -uh. Thanks, but I think we like this better. Oh. Can I play again with you tomorrow? Maybe George can help me improve my game. <laughs> George wondered what a rubber band would grow into. <laughs> George was going to grow all kinds of exciting things. The man with the yellow hat hadn't finished his speech. George could grow the rest for him. Blah, blah, dee, blah, blee, dee, blee, blue, blah, blah. Ooh. Thank you. This would be the best speech ever. Mm. Hi, jo Have you been just sitting there waiting for me the whole time? Oh. You weren't just sitting there waiting for me the whole time. Oh. When the man looked like that, it meant George was about to hear a long lecture. So, you see? Seeds, nuts, acorns grow. 
My socks, the radio, the can opener don't grow. <laughs> okay, now we have to dig up all those things you buried. <laughs> oh. Oh. George, where's my speech? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we have to dig up my speech first. <laughs> Unlike Jumpy Squirrel, George didn't know how to find what he wanted. <laughs> Everything smelled like dirt. <laughs> hey, you dig in a swimming pool? Uh, oh, <laughs> no, Bill. Uh, George was being a squirrel and buried my speech. We can't find it. Well, I'll help. <gasps> Wait, I know someone who can really help. She's a great digger. No speech here. Oh, digging a pool there, are you? George buried something and we're trying to find it. Well, I've got a metal detector I use to find coins and such down by the lake. Maybe that'll help. Cool. Uh, well, my speech isn't exactly made of... Well, no. Ahoy! <gasps> Maybe it's what you're looking for. No, my speech isn't made of me Ooh! Are they pirate keys? That could be. Maybe to a treasure chest. Oh, no. We're, we're not going to find my speech, and I can't rewrite it in time. I'll just have to skip the tribute. <laughs> George didn't have the talents of a squirrel, but he did have the talents of a monkey, which meant he could see really well. <laughs> you found it! The speech! <laughs> well, that's not made of metal. Ah, so this is the air that inspired that wonderful speech. Are you planting something? <laughs> it's a long story. Oh. That's not a peanut. Looks like something you buried is growing. <laughs> Maybe you are a little bit squirrel after all. Being a dog, Hunley had tasted a lot of tennis balls. But these were the first that ever tasted like... ink? These were the valuable balls the doorman promised to protect. Hunley couldn't stop George from opening boxes that he thought belonged to him. But he knew how to play defense. It was tough for George to guess who sent all this stuff to him. There's a monkey and a wiener dog at the door. <gasps> Those careless delivery guys. If any of my balls aren't properly packed, I'm going to be very upset. Now George understood. These boxes belonged here, and the delivery man gave them to George by mistake. I'll be down to check every last one as soon as I'm off the phone. 
they had to clean up before the ball collector came downstairs. All they had to do was put the balls back into the right boxes. How hard could that be? Sometimes things don't fit when they look like they should. Or they fit in more than one place. But there's only one place they really belong. And once you figure that out, it's easy. Even if you're a monkey. Hunley showed George how to lay them flat. <laughs> they did it. All the balls were back where they started. Kind of. Looks like they're all here. Oh, even the priceless Andy Turkey Rolly perfect score bowling ball. <sighs> I'm back. Huh? Is everything okay? My delivery came. Your dog and monkey took care of everything. That's great. Thank you, Hundley. Thank you, George. It's nice to know Hundley has help keeping the place clean and organized. George, would you like to help Hundley again tomorrow morning? You can be my official dorm monkey. I won't be here and tomorrow is water delivery day. <laughs> no one wanted to go in there. Maybe there was another way. There was no way George's arm could ever reach the bottom of that hole. Hi, have you seen George? I sent him to the store a while ago and... Store? I saw him running past the store down the street. Oh, the construction site's that way. I hope he's being a good little monkey. This wasn't as easy as it looked.
had to be a machine for this. I inspected every girder last night, and I can't find the problem. And the only way to be safe is to tear it down and start all over. Otherwise, a big wind or strong shaking might make the whole thing fall down. Watch that sound. Hey, hey, stop that! The site's closed! This site isn't safe. I'll turn off that jackhammer. <gasps> Look, a broken water main. That's what weakened the foundation. It was hidden. had nothing to do with this. Mm -hmm. I am so sorry. I didn't know one monkey could knock over a building. Can I pay for lunch? No, George didn't cause that. That side of the building was unsafe. Now I'll have to knock it down and start all over. No, you don't. We can save the whole thing by changing the design. Hmm. Very angular. Modern. And it would save money! I love it! How can I thank you? I know! Here! Well, what are we waiting for? We'll bring back blueberry waffles for everyone. <laughs> and that's how Curious George helped design a building. And got blueberry waffles, too.